Well, good Saturday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Man, it's kind of cray-cray. Um, boy, I, just bear with me for a second here. Um, today we went to um, this antique mall that's you know a couple towns over from us. And if any of you guys have heard me before talking about where I want to build an outdoor kitchen, um, and I was talking about getting like an old stove, an old stove, old wood burning stove like they would have had before. You know, basically we're going to build a, you know, a roof and everything on it. We'll build a brick smoker and things with it and um, do this wood stove that you, you know, fire burning stove, an oven and the stove burners and everything else and be able to cook like they would have before. And while we were out there, we saw this one. It's, it was not a huge one, but it's like a five burner one. It's kind of rusty and, you know, some of the porcelain is, you know, messed up on it and stuff, but fixable. And it was only like $269 because everywhere I've looked, it's been seeing these things for a hell of a lot more than $269. And I was like, man, I love this thing. But I was like, nah, I can't do that because I don't have the place to put it or the outdoor kitchen. And so my wife... We went over to the historic place because we're working on the brick campaign and figuring out significant history pieces so we can put the bricks and stuff at the red brick house here. And so we went to the, hist uh, the history museum that's here and got talking to them and got some different pamphlets on the history and stuff. Come to find out that that stove company was from here that was in business from 1880 to like 1910. So my wife is like, you got to go get that stove. Okay, but they close at six, so we're, we're kind of done with that. So anyway, enough with my issues right now. Um, yesterday, Keyshawn Johnson on his podcast posted videos about um, Malik Hooker, who, you know, it was a 30-minute interview, but, you know, some of the questions were asked. And see, a lot of times people will ask you questions that become kind of gotcha questions. You know, you ask them about this, that, and the other, and then you find out, you know, they'll answer a question and not realize that they're saying something controversial when they don't necessarily mean to. Whereas where people will think, they'll get the perception that all of a sudden they just out of the top of their mind just started talking and bad-mouthing somebody else. And I think that was the case yesterday. And Micah Parsons didn't take it too well. On top of it, here's where another piece of this, I, just, I was sitting here contemplating about going back over and trying to get there before they close. I came across this, I forgot that Skip Bayless and Undisputed was still a show, but they were talking about, and I hadn't seen this clip right here. Let, let me play a little bit of it, because it's Malik Hooker. Prescott, listen to this. I wouldn't put Micah yet. I feel like Micah, I feel like we still got a lot to prove from Micah still has a lot to prove. Like he's, he's done a, a great job his first couple years in the league. Don't get me wrong. He's a, he's a fantastic player, but I feel like Micah still has a surface that he don't even know that he can scratch as far as what he's doing. So I would say Micah, I would say Micah's last just for that reason. Then. Wow. Keyshawn, and, and, how, how surprised were you Malik Cooker said that? I, I was, I was surprised. I wait, mean, wait, wait, but last to get so paid, so they got a couple guys get... that they got to address yeah. financially. Yeah. I mean, actually, I mean, you know, Mike going to make about two and a half million dollars as a first round pick this year, this yeah. season. So and they, they, they don't, they can they address them this year though? Yeah, they can address True. it. Okay. They can get it okay. done. But they got Dak, they got CD, and Zach Martin still has two years left. But you want to kind of maybe take a look and sniff around that so you can get him early for less money. I was surprised, though, Skip, because typically, as a player, you don't really get into other people's financial mess unless I'm endorsing them to get paid. Yes. Man, man right. what? So it's like, well, should Skip be paid and Paul be paid? Which one goes first? Man, they both should get paid. Both. They both, and so I was a little, and so I tried to even help him walk it back a little yeah. bit. And, and he sort of did. Yeah, he sort of kind of, but I, you know, I asked him the question. The question was simple. You got four guys coming up. Which one should go first? Because that's the conversation. Should it be CD, Lamb, the receiver who had a phenomenal year, 
You set them up, Key. Could, you set them up. <laughs> could it, uh -uh. Should it be Dak Prescott? Uh -uh. Should it be Micah Parsons? No. Zach Martin? But Micah is Zach, the only side Zach of the Martin. unit that he plays on on the defense. Zach Martin just got repaid, so got paid end, last year. I probably would have just said, man, I... Wait a minute. Zach Martin got paid last year, and he's contemplating retiring. What are you talking about? Wait, wait what, what the heck? So here's the question. Here's the question. Did Malik Hooker get set up? Did he get set up into this whole thing where, you know, you, you ask them questions that it's a no-win situation? You know, because think about it, though. First of all, first of all, for them to say Zach Martin to get paid. L let me, uh, maybe, you know, I, I have some memory issues. Let me make sure that that was a dream. Let me see. In 23-24, Zach Martin signed a two-year, $36 million contract with the Cowboys, including $5.8 million signing bonus and $36,850,000 um, guaranteed with an average salary of eighteen four two five. So now we're saying that Zach Martin should get another contract before Micah Parsons? What the hell is going on with you? What, what the, what? Hey, let, let me listen a little bit more here to these guys. All of them got to get paid. Yeah. Period. Right. They need to get paid to a whole nother level. Or even if you say C.D. Lamb, because right now all these receivers are going and all these receivers are getting paid. Much, they get the, 30, the, the die 50, is cast 50, on 60, all 70, 80 million dollars guaranteed. They getting money. So CD naturally would be one. Dak Prescott is is making fifty million dollars this year. Mike is making, I think, two and a half. Yeah. So I would naturally want the dude at two and a half to jump in front of the quarterback and right slightly behind C D. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was a little a little shocked, although he he did acknowledge the fact okay. that Okay. I'm a little shocked that the, that we're this stupid. Okay. Dak Prescott on his rookie contract, played it out. 680, 680, 680, and then he got a bonus because of the amount of playing time he had his first three years and got $2 million. They didn't jump to say, well, let's hurry up and pay you. What are you talking about? You got Micah Parsons this year for $2.5 million. Why do you want to pay him more money now? It might be the right thing to do, but the Cowboys' MO is keep that number low. I, I need cap relief. I don't need to to make more money. To, you know, take take more hits this year. Seriously. Now you're saying, well, Dak's getting fifty five. Well, yeah, but take a look at like you know these contracts that are being made right now. You could reduce his and get more money from Dak's. This logic or lack thereof that you're talking about makes no sense. And the reality is, is Dak Prescott is between fifty five and sixty. In a four-year deal, $20 million is not going to make a difference. If we're talking about C.D. Lamb, that die is pretty much cast. So whether it's 35, 36, or 37, you know, $2 million or $4 million difference is not going to make a difference in the grand scheme of things on that thing at all. You would rather keep Micah's deal dirt cheap. Now, I almost feel like after hearing some of this, that he was kind of, the questions were meant to strike controversy. I mean, maybe he could have said, you know, I'm not really, I don't, I don't have anything. I don't have a dog to fight on. I don't know who shot. I don't know. I don't know. But you know, and maybe that's his mistake, but it feels like he was set up. Now I'd like to hear what you guys think about that. Okay. I'd like to hear what you think about that. I think he was definitely set up. All right, good people. I appreciate you guys. And uh, hope you're having a great Saturday. And I'll see you guys soon. Peace out.